Shalom. I want to start by giving all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakadash. I want to send forth double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Shalom, La Barakim, La Bakarim, which means peace and blessings to the elect. The Lord's will is edifying. And uh, essentially, I was meditating on just acquiring the mysteries of the Lord. All right. And um, that's why we do these videos. <clears throat> that's why we go to camp. All right. That's why we pray. That's why we read the scriptures, because consistently doing these things, these works of faith. All right. Is going to be in instilling within us the word. All right. Which is going to lead to salvation. So let's just get a few scriptures. All right. Let me get uh, let me start with Amos real quick. This is the book of Amos chapter three, verse seven. It says. Surely the Lord power will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. All right, so the Lord has revealed his secret, his mysteries, his secrets unto his men, unto his prophets. All right, so we're supposed to be listening and hearkening unto the men of the Lord and, and trying to receive of that, of those uh, secrets, those hidden treasures. All right, because what? It's going to lead. It's going to lead unto peace. It's going to lead unto everything that we desire. The scriptures say, What then have Israel obtained that which he seeketh for? Not obtained. It says, The election have obtained it. The rest were blinded. What is Israel seeking for ultimately? Israel is seeking for salvation. Israel is, is seeking for rest. All right, deliverance. Okay, a peace of mind. And you only obtain that through this knowledge. All right, this is James chapter 1 and verse 19. Uh, Verse 21, it says, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. So constantly hearing this word becomes a part of you. That's why it's called the engrafted word. All right, you'll be driving, you'll be, uh, you know, just doing different things throughout your day, and different scriptures will pop into your mind. Okay, that's the word being engrafted within us, okay, which is going to lead unto the saving of our souls. Okay, that's why when all hell breaks loose, even though we're not going to have the Bible physically with us, we're going to know what to do because these these different scriptures are going to pop into our mind. That's why we're going to have the answers. That's why we're going to be stable in the times to come, whereas everybody else is going to be in a, a frantic state. They're going to be in a, a condition of panicking. We're going to be calm, cool and collected because these words are going to constantly run through our mind. All right. That's why we got to diligently receive of this. We have to diligently hear this word. Isaiah 33 and 6, it says, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. So the, the wisdom and this knowledge that we obtain right now in this time is what's going to save us. It's what's going to keep us stable in the times to come. All right, so that's why it's imperative all right, to put in that work. Hosea chapter 10 and 12, it says, Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. Because obtaining this wisdom is likened unto a labor. Okay, it's like unto husbandry. It's like unto tilling the tilling the land. Okay, but we're, we're sowing unto ourselves righteousness. We're doing the works of faith. It says, "For it's time to seek the Lord." We're seeking the Lord. It says, "Till He come and rain righteousness upon you." And that's what the Lord is going to do. He's going to come and He's going to deliver us from this wicked place. All right, but what we have to remain faithful until the end. All right, let's go ahead and get Matthew. It's Matthew chapter six, verse nineteen. It says. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust off corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. All right, and James just says, uh, lay apart superfluity of naughtiness. All right, overindulging in, in carnality, overindulging in, in things of this world. All right, the here and now. The here and now is not going to save us. All right, the here and now is not evil, but the here and now is vanity ultimately because it's going to perish. All right, that's why we have to seek heavenly things. That's why we don't store up our treasures on earth, okay, which is a temporal thing. But it says what? Verse 20 says, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. And how do we do that? By diligently acquiring the mysteries of the Lord. It says, where neither moth nor rust off corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. It says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. All right, and our heart is supposed to be upon the Lord. All right, let's see. Galatians. As Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, be not deceived, the heavenly father is not mocked, all right, because there's a lot of Israelites out here that's that's speaking that they're, they're about the Lord, 
all right, but their works doesn't show it, all right, the scriptures say, faith without works is dead, all right, and if you have, if you have faith like you claim, you're going to have works that, that that's going to show it, man, you are, you're going to have the different things, man, all right, you can't mock the Lord, you can't say you're of the Lord, but there's no evidence that you're of the Lord, all right, it says, for whatsoever man sow, that shall he also reap, all right, so if you're putting in work in the world and you're growing in the world and you're not putting in work towards the Lord, you're not growing in the Lord. All right. The Lord is going to see that. All right. It says, for he that sowed to his flesh shall the flesh reap corruption. Corruption is death. It's decay. All right. That's what happens when you sow to the flesh. It says, but he that sowed to the spirit shall the spirit reap life everlasting. But if you put in the work in the spirit, you're going to receive everlasting life. It says, and let us not be weary and well doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So we're not supposed to be weary in regards to storing up these treasures, in regards to seeking out the Lord. All right, because what? It's going to, it's going to lead unto a great reward. All right, a reward that's unfathomable. A reward that's not able to be comprehended within the, with our minds right now. All right, let's get that real quick. First Corinthians 2 and 9, it says, But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. The things which the heavenly father have prepared for them that love him all right so the lord has great promises for those that love him you have to show him that you love him though you can't just say with your mouth you can't just be lip service okay at the end of the day it's for our own benefit man it's not for the benefit of the heavenly father the heavenly father doesn't need us we're the ones that are in need of the heavenly father man all right it was isaiah chapter 55 verse 6 seek ye the lord while he may be found Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto Yahweh, and he will have mercy upon him and to our power, for he will abundantly pardon. So that's the, the beautiful thing. You, you seek the Lord diligently. All right, and he's going to have mercy upon us. Starting when, when all hell breaks loose, man. All right, part of us receiving our reward is when all hell breaks loose, us knowing what to do, man. When everybody else is in a panic, I got to keep. Bringing out that point, man. These people, they don't know the scriptures, all right, because they didn't spend time learning of the scriptures. They didn't spend time learning of the Lord, all right. So when all hell breaks loose, like the Lord told us it's going to happen, Jacob's trouble when that occurs, they're not going to know what to do, all right. It's going to be the beginning of their great downfall. It's going to be a great fall, all right. But we're not going to fall. We're going to be able to stand in these days, man, because what? We're seeking out the mysteries of the Lord. We're seeking the Lord, all right. It's the book of. Sirach chapter 3 and verse uh, 17. My son, go on with thy business and meekness, so shall thou be beloved of him that is approved. And this is our ultimate business. This is our first work. This is our first labor. This is our first love. All right, we're supposed to do it in meekness, and we're going to be beloved of him that is approved. Who's approved? Yahweh Shai is approved, man. The Heavenly Father, Yahweh, told uh, the top disciples, Peter, all right, James and John, he said, this is my beloved son and whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. All right, so we want to be uh, beloved of Yahweh Shai. All right, because Yahweh Shai is beloved of the Heavenly Father, so we're going to receive mercy, man. Let's get this real quick in Psalms. I really, I like the scripture a lot. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 2, and verse, I'm going to start at verse 11. It says, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. All right, because we understand the Lord is about to bring wrath. All right, so that should bring great fear upon you. That should that should make you put in work alone, knowing what the hell the Lord is going to bring and wanting to escape that. All right, verse 12 says, kiss the son. All right, you're supposed to kiss the son. We're supposed to worship Yahweh Shai. It says, lest he be angry and ye, and ye perish from the way. So if, so if you don't kiss the son, if you don't strive to please the Lord through seeking him diligently, you're going to die. All right, terribly. It says, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him, but those that trust in the Lord are blessed. Okay. Sirach 3 and 18. The greater thou art, the more humble thou thyself, and thou shalt find favor before the Lord, because the Lord resists the proud, man. When you come to serve the Lord, you gotta remember that meek and humble spirit, man. Remember, uh Moses was was beloved because he was the most humble man on the planet Earth. Let me see if I can find that real quick. Uh this is Numbers 12 and 3. It says, Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And we know who Moses is in the reincarnation. That's King David, man. 
That's that's the Lord's man, all right? A man after the most high's heart. All right, so what? The greater thou art, the more humble we shall be, and we're going to find favor. All right, the scripture says, the meek shall inherit the earth, verse 19. For many are in high places and of renown, but mysteries are revealed unto the meek. And that's what's important, man, the mysteries of the heavenly father, which we should be seeking to obtain. It says, for the power of the Lord is great, and he is honored of the lowly. And that's whom the Lord is dealing with. Okay, the lowly. It's not about these tangible goods. All right, it's not about the carnality, man. It's about the Lord. This is Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23. It says, Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, these carnal things, these fleshly things. This is not what a man ought to glory in. Verse 24 says, But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am Yahweh." Which exercises loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Which also rejoice in the fact that we know the Lord, man. And that we're able to seek him. And that we're able to call upon his name daily. Alright. So Lord's will is edifying. Call Lord Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai by Shem Rukh Double honors to the apostles and the elders of great millstone who rule well. Shalom, Wabarakim, Labakari, and peace and blessings to the elect.